Hello, everyone. Welcome to Trainer Chat. I am Allison Sherman, and I'm here with the illustrious Michelle Lennon. We are going to talk today about potty training in an apartment or a condo. You know, this is something that comes up a lot, Michelle, and I think that some of your viewers could really use a few more tips on this kind of unique situation of, you know, the distance to the potty area or the other dogs or the distractions or the neighbors. So I just think that we could take some time today and just go through all of it and really help these folks out. What do you think? Awesome. Yeah, it is. It lends to just a little bit different um, of a topic than just potty training in a home because of things going on in an apartment that are different. So yeah. I'm looking forward to talking about those things and helping our viewers with those puppies who live in an apartment. Okay, well, before we get started, you guys know what to do. We need you to hit the subscribe button. We have videos lined up like crazy. It is going to be such a great season for all these great puppy videos coming out. So you'll want to hit the subscribe button and then you'll just get an email when they come out and you'll be able to check in and get some new information above and beyond the potty training in an apartment. Okay, so let's get started. First, let's just kind of talk about the basics. Where do we even begin with potty training? And then once we talk about that, we can talk about applying it to an apartment, but get us started with the basics. Yeah, honestly, the, the very first thing is we really want to know about the fundamentals, right? Everybody should start in the new puppy starter kit um, and learn about the four fundamentals of potty training. And so we have a reward, restrict, clean, and routine. You can kind of sing a little jingle to remember them. Reward, restrict, clean, and routine. And those are the things you're going to focus on in the beginning. If you go into the free new puppy starter kit, the link is in the description below this video, uh, you're going to find the potty training lesson and a bunch of other things uh, for new puppy owners to get you started, including some printable resources. So take advantage of those. Those are free. They're there for you. One of the things I love about this kit is that even if you've got kind of a handle on it or you think you're doing pretty well, sometimes there's hiccups along the way. You know, there's always going to be sometimes some accidents throughout the first six months or a year. Uh, there's a troubleshooting document that really goes through some common problems that people have with potty training and kind of how to address them. And I have gone back to that multiple times with my own dog when we're struggling and kind of trying to figure out what to do. So I would really encourage people to check that out, even if they are kind of well past the initial phase. Yeah, it, it, I think sometimes we don't know until we didn't know, right? We don't know until somebody shared with us what we could be missing. So that document in, in the resource packet is going to be super helpful for, for anybody working on potty training, even if it's an apartment or a home. So, right. okay, well, let's talk specifically about apartments. So one of the questions that you get a lot is about how to use that common potty spot, you know, the one maybe in the courtyard or downstairs near the lobby. How do you use that if the puppy hasn't had all of the vaccinations? Like, isn't it not okay for them to go outside or especially be around other dogs? Yeah, that, that's a good question. And to be honest, there's no real specific answer because every situation is different. So I can't tell my viewers here one thing and, and it applies to everybody because it's not going to be a good fit for everybody. Some apartments have a place for puppies to go potty. They have like a balcony or a grassed in area. Other places have nothing like that, and they, they need to figure out where to take their puppy that is safe. Um, and so a safe place would include a place where other dogs don't frequent often because you don't know who's up to date on vaccinations. Uh, we want to make sure that it is, it's also not in a highly trafficked area. You know, if you're in an apartment complex and there's a lot of traffic going by, your pup's easily going to get spooked or startled or distracted and lose focus on the task at hand, which is going potty outside, and then they might come back inside and have an accident. So if you're able to set up some space outside that's safe for your puppy to go, that is ideal. So you mentioned like a balcony. So why would a balcony work as, as well? Like what is it about a balcony that's kind of magic? Well, you could set up a grassy patch or a fresh patch. We actually have the fresh patch. It looks like this, right? It looks like this little tray and the little real, it's real grass, by the way. You could set that up on your balcony and that is ideal. We, we want to use that over say pee pads because pee pads encourage our pups to go in the house. Uh, they get shredded up and eaten up and potentially could cause a blockage. So we do want to set something up maybe on the balcony because it most resembles outdoors, right? You know, where they have the sights, the sounds, the smells of really being outside so that eventually when you do get your puppy out down on ground level, 
they'll have a better understanding of what they need to do in a comfort level. If we never take our puppies outside and never expose them to the outside world before they have all rounds of vaccinations, uh, we're setting ourselves up and our puppies up for a lifelong struggle, really. I know that a lot of the groups that you're in have been kind of seeing that, that your trainers and, and behaviorists are really seeing that these kind of puppies who haven't been exposed much earlier on in their lives are, are now kind of being you know, taken outside and they're just, they're just pancaking. And it's just, it, it's so important to get them out earlier so that they start to build that positive relationship. Absolutely. You know, we, we do see a lot of these, um, probably our pandemic puppies, we call them, right? You know, you got them during the pandemic and you wanted to offer a little potato to love and, and snuggle with and have as a companion. Um, but then you were afraid to take them out or maybe even your vet said something about not taking them out. And that is causing a lot of problems, a lot of problems when we underexpose our dogs, especially during that critical imprint period. So safely, Take your puppy outside, getting them exposed to the real world around them in a positive way is going to have lasting effect on your pup as well. They'll be prepared for things that they encounter uh, each and every day, as opposed to being underprepared and then overwhelmed when they get out there. That kind of deprivation to Disneyland effect is no bueno. <laughs> no yeah. good. Yeah. So even if you do have a grassy patch on your balcony, you know, it's still important to, to start that exposure session in safe areas, helping that pup get outside to new areas. We have a student in um, the pro level in our student group, and they were just talking to us last week. You remember they were saying that they take their pup out to the roof and yes. it was a quiet spot, but exposing them to some new things, being outdoors. And it was just a really nice uh, they, that day that they did that. Yeah, I love that some, you know, apartment buildings who are very pet friendly have opportunities for, you know, the pet parents to take their pups out there. Um, just keep in mind that, you know, if you see some uh, leftovers, <laughs> right, somebody didn't pick up after their pup, uh, you want to keep your pup away from that, especially if they haven't had all three rounds of vaccinations yet. So bottom line, there is a way to take your puppy outside safely. If you don't know the dogs that are around, you don't know their vaccination status, you got to get a little bit off the beaten path there. Exposing pups to the outdoors during this imprint period is really important. But that balcony grassy patch, it could be a good option. Yeah. Now, some people use that grassy patch indoors. Maybe they put it right near the door. And this is kind of their temporary solution for now. One of the things they mentioned is that the pup is a little distracted. They're like, well, they go near the grass, but not on the grass. How do I help them realize that this grassy spot is the spot? Easy thing, easy peasy is, is you can set up a puppy pen right around that grassy patch inside your, you know, inside your apartment. This is going to define the space a little bit more for your puppy. This is going to keep them more focused on going in that spot. Um, and you do want to make sure that it's set up in such a way that it's not a lot of space around the, the grass patch. It's really tucked up close to, the puppy pen is tucked up close to that, that grassy patch. Um, that way, when you lead them in there on a leash, because remember, we want to use a leash when we're working on potty training. We're leading them over there. We're leading them on that fresh, fresh patch. Um, and then when they do go, reinforcing. You want to make sure you use those treats uh, to let them know, good job. I want to see more of that in this spot. Yeah, you mentioned that about the leash. I think sometimes that's a little piece that you might forget is even if you're not able to take them, you know, outside to the common area just yet, having them on a leash and helping them with leash skills, this is these prime opportunities of you know, building up their leash skills in a non-distracting environment. And potty training you know, builds leash skills in that way. It's practice sessions. Absolutely, yeah, especially when you get outside and the, the world is so distracting for them and they just wanna sniff and explore everything. Leash skills are hard because it's not natural for our puppies. So working on that inside, that's a great place to start. So one of the things that, that comes up a lot is once the puppy is fully vaccinated, and they can, you know, be outdoors in the same spots as the other puppies or dogs in the in the apartment building. How, how, what's the best way to now change that to say, okay, we've used the grassy spot in the apartment or on the balcony, but now we want to go outside. We want to teach our puppies that outside is the place to go. How do you do that transition? Yeah, that's a really good question. Honestly, we're going to go back to the basics. We're literally going to go back to the basics of potty training. Again, like you heard me say, using a leash 
reinforcing in the potty spot. Um, we want to make sure we're sticking to a good schedule too, so that you're, you're preventing the accidents from happening inside. You definitely want to reward like crazy. I mean, this is a new environment for them to be in. This is something that's going to be exciting. So when they finally do go, let them know that was the best thing they did. Don't be too over the top because then you might actually stop them from going in that potty spot, but don't forget to bring out your your treats when you go out to that out to that spot. So that means you know you're probably heading down a hallway, maybe even an escalator or elevator or something like that. Bring your treats with you. Every moment that you experience as you go out there could be a training moment. Um, you're also going to want to make sure that you take up the stuff that's inside. So if you were using a fresh patch or you were using um, something on the balcony take that up. It's no longer available anymore because you are trying to transition them out to this new spot. So if the old spot was still available, it can be very confusing for your puppy. Very, con It's like a sending a conflicting message. Well, the good news is, is that about the time vaccinations are complete, which is usually what, around 16, 17 weeks, by this time, you should be noticing a pretty good schedule with your puppy of when he needs to go. I know that with Lincoln, this guy here, I knew exactly how many minutes I had after his meal before I had to get him out. And for Lincoln, it was like less than a minute. He was just a quick one. But, you know, people start to notice the schedule with their dogs and you'll know, okay, you know, it's been three hours, it's been two hours, it's time to go out for another potty break. That schedule is just one of, for me, it was one of the most important tools in potty training. Yeah. Are you keeping one, writing down a log of what's happening and when it happens, and then writing down the times. This is so helpful for homes that have multiple people in them who are helping with the potty training or, or puppy training. So everybody can stay on track. Um, and you can really start to see a pattern when you write stuff down. People always you know, think it's silly to keep track of your puppy's potty schedule, but that is how you start to see their bathroom habits form. You start to see things on a schedule and then you can start taking your puppy out before they need to go, just even just a few minutes before they need to go, which is gonna prevent those accidents inside. More yeah. accidents inside, the stronger the habit becomes. More potty outside with lots of reinforcement out there, the stronger the habit becomes. Okay, a minute ago you mentioned about, you know, taking them out your door, down the hallway, maybe down the elevator, down a set of stairs until you finally get out. Okay, we're talking about young puppies here. How do you help the puppy hold their bladder throughout that whole process? How do you help them learn that the hallway is not a spot for potty? The elevator is also not a spot. What do you recommend? Yeah, I mean, we have students all over the world, <laughs> everywhere from New York to Tokyo. So they tell us that it is tough to get their puppy down these long hallways and down a set of stairs or, or even in an elevator. So this is all about what we call pre-training. So this means teaching the skill before we need it. So we want to make sure that we're working out in the hallway. We want to make sure we're working in the lobby. We want to introduce our puppies to the escalators and the elevators or whatever it is that's in your building. We don't want it to be new and novel every time you need to go out for a potty break. So for that reason, we're gonna work on it outside of those, outside of those potty trip times. Um, this might mean though, that we're going to need to work on some leash skills, right? So you, you probably already started the leash skills inside your apartment or your condo. We wanna take those same leash skills and apply them out into the hallway and out into the lobby and even in the elevators. So it's a, it's a great opportunity to work on all the training games from inside our 30 Day to Puppy Perfection program um, out in different environments, not just in your in your little, little apartment. You know, people um, mention this a lot. They talk about, you know, oh, if I take my puppy out of the crate and how do I help him hold his bladder until we get out into the backyard? It's really the same thing with apartments is, you know, we have the same advice. You want to kind of normalize that path and make it like, oh, I know this. I know this routine. We go from here. And then we go here and then we go there. And then that's what we do, you know, kind of just making it, oh, we, I've done this before. But if you've never done it at that moment, the puppy's going to be so excited. And then this is something that you've taught me. They're going to sniff and then they're going to have to go. They are. The, the more they sniff, the more excited they become and the more they're going to have to go. So if you make those smells and that environment kind of low key and boring, they're just going to keep on walking until you get to that potty spot. And then that's where they can go. You should aim to be that neighbor that everybody knows or, oh, you're the one who trains your dog in the hallway. 
<laughs> I love that. I love that. People start to pick up on, on how much time and effort you're putting into the training. And that says a lot about you as a puppy owner. Well, let's talk about the bells for just a minute. We go over that in the new puppy starter kit of kind of how to help your dog signal to you that they have to go. Maybe as they're getting older and you're not watching the schedule as much, you just kind of want them to be able to alert you that it's time. How do you use potty bells in an apartment? Yeah, I mean, as you can see here, you know, from our from our graphic, we have three steps that we work on when we're working on potty bells. And as Allison said, you can grab the three steps in that new puppy starter kit bell training video. Um, but to work on them in an apartment, we're going to put them near the door that we'd like our puppy to go out. You know, so this is another opportunity for pre-training, right? Your puppy might not have full access to the entire apartment right away. So we are going to still work on the skill, even though we don't need it right away. We're going to put the bells near the door and follow the steps. So step one is really just you ringing the bells, not trying to force the bells near your puppy or try to take their paw and paw it at the bell. You are working on just ringing the bells, taking them out and reinforcing in whatever spot you need them to go in. So if that's out on your balcony, make sure the bells then are near the balcony door. If you're going to go out into a hallway and down an elevator, make sure that the bells are near the, the exit door. It really is a sequence and our dogs pick up on those sequences okay. with some consistency, right? I mean, we can't expect, you know, a nine week old puppy is going to be ringing bells and understanding exactly what to do and where to do it. But okay, just help us out a little bit. What, what about when can we expect to see some of this kind of take hold in our puppies? Oh my goodness. That is that. I think that's probably the most common question we get. How long is this going to take? How long till my puppy is potty trained? Oh, every dog is different because of so many different factors, right? Their age, their energy level, um, the environmental factors, how much water they're drinking, how much food they've taken in. To be honest, the process goes faster when you're consistent and you're reinforcing for all the right behaviors, and you're managing the environment so that they don't have all this access all over the place to continue to have accidents inside. Because remember we said the habit gets stronger the more they do it. So I would say um, if you are following, following the four fundamentals and you're managing the space and you're, you know, you're doing all the things, you will start to see progress soon. Don't get frustrated with your puppy though. It's so easy to do, so easy to do. But I want you to look at them and I want you to say out loud how old they are and then how old have you even owned them for? And most of the time when you put it in that perspective, people go, oh, I'm expecting a little too much for my puppy too soon, right? So I would say, you know, let's aim for maybe closer to that six month mark. We might mm -hmm. start to see a fully potty trained pup, but know that there is regression during that first year. You know, there's going to be ups and downs. Why? Lots of factors, hormones in their body changing potentially spay or neuter surgery and the aftercare and the meds that they're given, they might make them more thirsty, which might lead to a puppy that needs to go out or potentially have more accidents. So there's a bunch of different factors, but let's, let's aim for maybe about that six month mark. That's exactly what I saw it really take hold with Lincoln. I mean, I saw he was getting better and the times in between our potty breaks was, you know, kind of extending. But when I really started to notice that we were having consistently you know, it was working, he was going at the times that I was taking him really about five and a half months. And, and then it just got better. But you know, you're totally right. We have storms that come in or, you know, something's changing outside and we really have to watch that schedule still. Yeah. I, we see it often where people, you know, even with 14 week old puppies, they're getting really aggravated and frustrated that their pups not potty trained yet. And they're like, we've done all the things. What are we doing wrong? And then when we break it down, we realize maybe they weren't managing the space. Maybe they forgot or started to wean off the reinforcement too soon. Or a lot of people say, oh, I didn't know I was supposed to use a leash when we take our puppy outside. And then the puppy's getting distracted while out there. And then they lose focus on going and come back inside and go. So there's some fundamentals, right, that we talk about that sometimes are just missed. And that's why we're sharing this with you guys, you know, so that you guys can uh, maybe think about it and go, what am I missing? Which one of these things are they, that they're telling me about? Do I need to go back and redo and revisit? And we always say, keep those expectations low and your patience high. You know, even though your puppy looks like they're more mature because they have, they, they're acting like a toddler, right? So you're thinking, oh, toddler status, we're probably, we should be potty trained by this point. They physically might look like a toddler, but mentally, 
they're more like an infant and even development. You know, the brain and the bladder really needs time to grow and develop. And that is closer to that six month mark where our, our brain or their brains and their bladders are mature enough and strong enough to hold their bladder for longer periods of time. It takes time. That's not going to happen right out of the gate with a eight, 10, 12, 16 week old puppy. Yeah. Yeah. You'll see, we'll see progress in other areas, but you know, we really have to give them some time to work this through physically and, you know, in their brain, you know, you mentioned something about distractions outside and this is something that apartment, um, you know, owners really have to work through is they, they take their dog to the potty spot, but their other dogs may be there at the time or there have been, or maybe if somebody's walking through and it gets really distracting, how do you help the younger puppy not lose focus when they're out there? You do have to take your pup to the quietest spot possible, you know, and that might take some time um, on your part to go out and look for that spot before you take your puppy out. That's a good piece of advice. Just go out there and scout out a potty spot. Check different times of day. Go to a quiet spot. Um, You might also need to keep them moving a little bit. So you've gone to the potty spot. You're sitting there. Then they notice something. A leaf blow by. Another dog walks by. Keep them moving. Keep them more focused on you and the walking and then the sniffing, and then comes the the urge to go. So if you keep them moving, that can be very helpful. Yeah, I know uh, one of the games that you teach in the online course, the blocking game, has really helped me a lot when Lincoln's been distracted outside. I mean, even now, I take him on a walk, you know, in the neighborhood, and he sees another dog or something, he can get kind of distracted. Maybe he's, you know, going potty there, and I've used that blocking game to really help him kind of remain a little more focused. And I think that sometimes people who live in apartments and have puppies will find the course to be even more helpful because they have those additional challenges of neighbors, you know, the distance to the potty spot, other dogs. Okay, I have another question. This one is about nighttime. You got to admit, taking the puppy out in the middle of the night more than once, even once, th- this is a real challenge in an apartment. Can, can you help us through this at all? Honestly, consistency. We got to come back to that thing. I know, I know it's a pain in the butt. I know that getting up in the middle of the night when your puppy has to go to take them down that hallway, down the elevator and out to the potty spot is a pain. However, if we're not consistent with that, we are going to start to see setbacks. It's going to take a lot longer for our puppy to get to a, a place of where you can proclaim potty training success, right? So being consistent, taking them, you know, even though they have to go, taking them out there. If we start to let them have accidents inside, in their crate even, oh my goodness, I can't tell you how many people have come to me with troubles of their pup going in the crate. And no matter what we do, cleanups, uh, moving the crate, we end up having to get a whole new crate and starting the crate training and the potty training process all over again. That's like double the triple the work. You do take them out. You try to keep it calm and quiet. You try not to, you know, turn on all the lights if you can help it. That helps to keep them more relaxed. Uh, you don't do a lot of talking. You know, you, you take them out. You give them the treat when they go. Yes, a nice, calm, quiet tone. You quietly bring them back in, you put them back in their crate, and you hope they fall asleep. (laughs) You know, you mentioned the crate, and this is an important part of it, is that I I know some puppies um, have a trouble kind of getting used to the crate, and that's one of the things that we go over in the um, potty or the um, apartment video that you've recorded previously about raising a puppy in an apartment and how to help them love their crate and not bother the neighbors. But crate training is really related to potty training. It really helps them learn how to hold their bladder. So if you're not crate training, you might end up having to go out in the middle of the night for a lot longer. Yeah, you're right. Crate training and potty training go hand in hand. Uh, When they're in their crate, especially if it's the right size for our puppy, this is a puppy that's going to be able to relax and settle in there. They're going to be able to hold their bladder longer while they're in there because there's not a lot of room to roam around, which means we're strengthening up the bladder muscles to be able to hold that bladder longer for longer periods of time. So I would say that if you don't have the crate training down, definitely take a peek at module one of our program because we go over the crate training troubleshooting, how to build duration in there, how to start to eventually add distractions going on around your pup while in the crate. So crate training and potty training for sure. Like they fit together like a glove. 
Play training in an apartment really is so important because it will help your puppy learn like, oh, I'm in here, I'm gonna rest, I'm gonna relax, I'm gonna wait for mom or dad to come home. And then you're not gonna have those challenges of bothering the neighbors like you might if the pup is roaming around, getting anxious, chewing on the baseboards, things like that. So, you know, taking the time in the beginning to work on those fundamentals of crate training, of potty training and leash skills, those are really gonna be important, especially for apartment puppies. You know, talk a little bit more if you could, Michelle, about how we can help them at the pro level of the course. Cause I know that we have a number of people like you mentioned from Tokyo, from New York, from some of these major cities that are really getting some good help from you and Nicole. Uh, on those Zoom calls and in the private Facebook group? Uh, the pro level of our of our course, so there's the two levels, DIY level and, and pro level of 30 Days to Puppy Perfection, that's where you get the personalized support. That's where if you have a situation going on in your apartment that we need to work through, we can dialogue back and forth and figure out what's happening. Maybe it's the great location. Um, maybe it is that your pup's not comfortable out on the balcony where the fresh patch is. So there are some things that we can do to tailor the, the training to fit your needs, especially with, you know, with the struggles that, that many people come across uh, when potty training in an apartment. And yeah, so every situation is a little bit different and that's where that personalized guidance and support, you know, let's try this, let's try that. What is this situation for you? Even when it comes to where's a good place to take my puppy out on a walk, you know, how can I help them feel comfortable when we're trying to find a quiet location for a decompression walk? All of those things are things that we've, you know, really guided people with. Yeah, yeah. People, our students, they submit pictures to us inside the student Facebook group. Um, and then we can kind of take a look at what's going on in the environment, or they might take us out on a walk with them, right? And then we can really see what's happening and why the pup might be struggling, whether they can't go potty or if they can't walk on a leash, we help with those problems as well. Not just potty training, all, all the things really that, we're, that you're working on with your puppy. So at that pro level, you get a more personalized response and it's tailored exa to exactly what you have going on. Our Zoom calls that you mentioned, Allison, you know, we do have three of those a week uh, where our students pre-submit questions and even sometimes just hop on and ask questions. Okay, so all of that is amazing advice. Um, thank you very much, Michelle. So just, you know, to recap everybody, consistency is going to be really important. You still got to follow those kind of fundamentals of potty training. Don't forget to get your puppy outside. Outside is the place. Outside is the place for exposure to new things. It's the place for potty. It's it's the place. We don't want to just limit our puppies to an inside area only, especially during that critical uh, beginning period where they're learning about the world. And, you know, I literally love what you were talking about, how you want to kind of just make that path to this potty spot super normal. Well, oh, nothing to see here. Walking down the hallway, going in the elevator. That's going to involve some training, but I think your neighbors are going to love it. Yeah, the, one of our students actually, um, she, she did something really sweet and I think pretty cool. She uh, put little goodie bags, really simple, really simple little goodie bags together for her immediate neighbors around her with just a little, a little note, a handwritten note that said that she was working on training a new puppy. Um, she was aware that the puppy, you know, still had some work to do and, and some things to learn. And it just it helped her feel better. And it also helped the neighbors understand what was going on. And everybody was so understanding. They told her, this was so sweet of you to do. It wasn't necessary, but we really appreciate it. And other people were like, oh, thanks. I'm, I'm so happy. I know what's going on now. So it can be very comforting for you and for your neighbors. If you, you know, you don't have to do that, but it can be really helpful to kind of smooth the things over if your neighbors are a little edgy about a new puppy being next to you or near them in the hallway or, or wherever, wherever you're located in your building. Yeah, it can really keep your own stress level down. It can keep the puppy stress level down because they're going to pick up on your stress. And it kind of just lets you have a little freedom to be like, we're going to work through this, but it'll be okay. And then eventually, I bet they'll become friends and maybe it can become a good puppy playmate for yours. You can kind of scope out whether you got a, a similar temperament, similar size, and then Pretty soon, it might end up being a pal. That would be awesome if they, if you had a, if they, if you guys who are in an apartment with your puppy have a neighbor who has a dog that's about the same size and temperament, play date material, 
Heck yeah, that would be awesome. Right, you, you apartment dwellers who have that advantage might have some built-in playmates. Now we do want you to choose them carefully, make sure they're about the right size, they play similar style, that's something we can help you with as part of our online course. But you know, you got some, uh, you got some good opportunities there for some, for some fun times for you and the pups. So I hope that uh, I hope that you'll be able to find some of that. And I think that we're setting you up for some good success in the apartment. Like we said, there's another video that we've got on our channel. We'll link to it below that will help you with just general apartment things and puppy raising. We talk a little bit more about free training in that one. But if you really need some help, if you're really struggling, join us at the pro level of the course. We'll get you through. I also will link a nighttime crate training video for you guys as well in the description. So if you guys are struggling with nighttime crate training slash potty training stuff, that will be helpful as well. All right, Allison, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for, for uh, emceeing the call and, and helping our new students out or new viewers out as well. All right, everybody, if you haven't subscribed yet, this is your chance. Hit the subscribe button. We'll let you know when the next one comes out. Maybe I'll come to a next one. I love chatting with trainers and uh, maybe we'll see you again. Bye, Allison. Bye, Michelle.